Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! I used to work at a local cafe. It was a small place with a cozy atmosphere and I loved it there. I had been working there for over a year and had developed a close relationship with the regulars and the staff. One day, a new customer came in and immediately made an impact. We were referred to her as Karen and from the moment she walked in, it was evident that she reeked of entitlement. I had never encountered someone like her before. She would constantly demand things to be done her way and would throw tantrums if things weren't exactly as she wanted them. She would talk down to the staff and would even treat the regulars with disdain. But the thing that made it even worse was that she would always tip poorly, as if the staff was lucky to serve her. I had always been a bit of a bushover, always trying to make everyone happy and avoid conflict. But something about Karen just rubbed me the wrong way. It was as if she thought that the world revolved around her and that everyone was there to serve her. I couldn't stand it, but I tried to avoid her as much as possible. One day, Karen came in, sat down at her usual table. And she started yelling at the barista because her coffee wasn't ready fast enough. I was on break at the time I was sitting outside, watching the scene unfold. I couldn't take it anymore. I walked in and approached her, trying to reason with her. Ma'am, the barista is doing their best, and the coffee will be ready in just a moment. Can you please be patient and treat them with some respect? I said. Who the hell are you to tell me what to do? Karen sneered. I demand to speak to the manager. This is unacceptable. I took a deep breath and tried to remain calm. I'm the manager. How can I help you? You can start by firing the incompetent staff that can't even make a simple cup of coffee. Karen retorted. I couldn't take it anymore. I had heard enough. I had a troubled past growing up in a foster care and struggling to make a living. I had worked hard to get to where I was and I wasn't going to let someone like Karen come in and belittle my staff. I took a step closer to her, looking her straight in the eye. You need to leave, Karen. You are no longer welcome here. Your behavior is unacceptable and you need to learn some manners. Karen stood up, getting right in my face. You can't talk to me like that. Do you know who I am? Then she shoves me. That was it. I had had enough. I pushed her back and she stumbled, falling on the floor. I was about to help her up when she lunged at me, trying to attack me. I pushed her back again and she fell to the floor, hitting her head and knocking herself out. I called the police and an ambulance and when they arrived, I told them what had happened. They took Karen to the hospital and I was questioned by the police. I explained the situation and how she had been acting entitled and aggressively towards my staff. The police took my statement and released me, but warned me that Karen was going to press charges against me. Days passed and I was called in for a hearing. I was nervous, but I knew that I had done the right thing. When I arrived at the court, I saw Karen and her attorney, a well-known high-powered lawyer. I was intimidated, but I tried to remain calm and tell my story. The judge listened to both sides and it became evident that Karen's entitled behavior was not limited to just the cafe, but had been a pattern throughout her life. She had taken advantage of others and treated them with disrespect and disregard. The judge ruled in my favor, stating that my actions were justifiable given the circumstances and that Karen needed to learn to treat others with respect. As a result of the ruling, Karen was ordered to undergo anger management therapy and community service. I was relieved that justice had been served, but I also realized that Karen's entitlement was a reflection of deeper issues and a lack of empathy and understanding for others. I hoped that she would use this as an opportunity to grow and become a better person. As for me, I quit my job at the cafe and decided to start my own business, a community center where people could come together, learn new skills and help each other. I wanted to create a place where everyone was treated with respect and dignity, regardless of their background or circumstances. Looking back at my encounter with Karen, I realized it was a turning point in my life. It showed me that I had the strength to stand up for what was right and to fight against entitlement and ignorance. 
I was proud of who I had become and the impact I was making in my community. I, 22 female, have been married to my husband, 37 male, for 4 years. Yes, I married a man in his 30s when I was 18. No, I was not groomed. We were complete strangers and we didn't really know our ages. We knew that we had an age gap between us, but we didn't know how big it was. When we found out the correct age, I was already pregnant. So we both decided to say skip it. We made it this far, why not see it to the end? He's big, sweet, adorable, and he's amazing with our daughter and he takes really good care of me. I couldn't have asked for a better husband. My mom hates my husband, but not for the reasons you think. They went to high school together, and this town is small as hell. Everybody knows everybody. And apparently how she acted back then is the same as how she acts now. She was a spoiled prat that cried when she didn't get her way. Hell, I have a memory of her throwing a tantrum like a child in a mall because my granddad wouldn't buy her the purse she wanted. She used to fight me and my siblings for our grandparents' attention all the time. My mother was in her teens when she had me. But Ben didn't stop her from controlling my siblings and I. We were her puppets throughout our childhood. Also, she was slash is a massive manipulator. That is why my mom hates my husband. She keeps trying to control me and my husband standing in a way of that. It took me watching my mother-in-law interact with my husband and his siblings to realize, oh, so this is how a mother should treat their children. My mom keeps trying to separate me from him. She has been trying everything in a book to get me to leave my husband. From lying about him to making everything he does towards me a big deal. The lies that my mom told me about my husband range from very hilarious to just downright infuriating. One time my mom told me that someone sent her screenshots of my husband's conversation with his supposed mistress. Why would an anonymous person send my mom, his mother-in-law, screenshots of someone else's conversation instead of his wife? Telling me that she overheard my husband say that. He didn't love my daughter and I, that he's only using me. She planted small underwear underneath the living room couch. When I found it, I didn't immediately blame my husband. My mom wanted me to blame my husband, but I didn't. My mom thanks my husband for being aggressive slash controlling with me. My husband is 6'8", 300 pounds, pure muscle, but he's a golden retriever in a human's body. He's a man-child. He's always happy, very energetic, and is just a sweetie. My husband loves to pick me and our daughter up then slam us on the mattress. We think it's fun, or on a really special occasion, if I'm lying down, he will come up and lay his full body weight on me. She thinks that a husband shouldn't do such things, and that they should treat their families like a delicate flower wrapped up in a pillow. She even told me that he was holding me captive because sometimes he will body block the door frame. I love when my husband acts like that because he's not acting immature. That means he's stressed or depressed. So when my husband slams us against the mattress, that means he's okay and that's okay with me. Also food. That my husband is controlling my eating. I'm intolerant to mostly all animal products. My husband realizes that I always get sick when I eat cheese or chicken. So he stops really bringing it into the house. My mom thinks that my husband is controlling my eating because... If he really loves you, he would let you eat what you want. He's going to starve you to death. Not minding the fact that my acne clear up. I don't sound like a baby elephant when blow my nose in the morning, but no. My husband is starving me and he's definitely not worrying about my health. Then it's the fear mongering. My husband has a history of violence and my mom keeps using his history to try and put fear into me. Like I said above, my parents and my husband went into high school together. My mom told me all the times she witnessed my husband get arrested or be dragged into the principal's office for beating a kid. My husband was in the same gang with my dad, so he was a violent delinquent. My mom only told me this because she was worried about my safety. I know about my husband's past behavior. Because he told me and my dad told me all the times that they got in trouble. However, the way my mom described my husband was like her trying to tell me that he is slash was a violence man. Like my husband's going to snap on me any day 
and kill me and our daughter in our sleep. She told me not to have any more children with him because I would forever be attached to him and I couldn't leave if it got too violent. My husband never laid his hands on me or our daughter. He doesn't yell at us or any of the sort. My husband got help with these issues in his early 20s. He lived the streets and has been happy-go-lucky ever since. Now you're probably wondering why my mom is in my life when she acts like this. My mom being around me is new as I lost my dad almost 7 months ago. Right after I found out I was pregnant. He was my dad and my daughter's best friend. I know how crazy my mom is, but I felt like I needed a parent. So I started letting her back in, but only a little bit at a time. Clearly now, it was a mistake. My mom has been trying to control my pregnancy ever since she found out and gets so pissy when my husband stops her weird nonsense. Then her tactics switch to saying that a mom should do this to a mom should do that. Keep telling me that I'm not going to be a real mom if I get a C-section, which likely is going to happen. Now on to last week. My leg just gave out and I went tumbling down the stairs. The worst pain in my life. And I pushed out my daughter's fat head. My mom was freaking out while my husband was trying to find a good way to pick me up without hurting me. Luckily, my daughter was at my mother-in-law's. So I was on the couch in pain, worrying that I might lose my children. My husband went into the room to get his stuff together to take me to the hospital. Leaving me alone was my mom. And she got evil. She was controlling back in my childhood, but this? This is a messed up thing she has done to me. She told me to get up and that I should just walk off the pain. That I'm a mother and that I need to start powering through. I told her that I couldn't move. That my arm and leg hurt. Then that woman proceeded to grab me by the messed up arm and tried to make me stand up. I was on the ground from the pain and I couldn't stand up so she started to basically drag me. I have never seen my husband angry before but he pushed her away and gave her this terrifying face. He picked me up to take me to the car while my mom was trying to argue with him. So I got to the hospital in excruciating pain while freaking the hell out. My husband eventually had to go back home. When he went back to the house my mom was still there and tried to pick a fight with him. According to my husband things got physical because my mom went into great detail of how he's abusing my daughter and I and that she might not have proof but she's going to prove it. He almost hit my mom but he restrained himself and only left a bruise from where he grabbed her. To be honest, I would have slapped the teeth out of that woman. I'm back home now and everything has gone to chaos. My mom used the altercation she had with my husband to her benefit, saying that he assaulted her and that my accident wasn't an accident. This is the worst experience I have ever had. Mostly because I'm now dealing with flying monkeys, questioning my love for my mom because how can I be okay standing by my husband? I fell down the stairs. I even could have lost my kids and my mom is doing this nonsense. There are a lot of people who believe my mom's story and a few who don't. I try to talk to people and tell them the truth about what really happened, but they aren't listening to me. Now my husband is being harassed. People calling him a woman beater and POS. Someone scratched up his car and popped the tires. He's trying to act all happy like he usually does, but I know when he's faking a smile. And my daughter is very confused. She doesn't know what's going on. I don't know how to explain why daddy's car is all messed up or why she's not allowed to see grandma. We haven't left the house, answered our phones or answered the door because people won't leave us alone. I could have avoided all of this if I just never let that woman back in. This is on me. Now, what have I gone through in the past week? We explained to my daughter in a kid-friendly way what grandma has done and why she can't see her. Grandma had lied about daddy and grandma made daddy and mommy sad. My daughter doesn't really get it but she's okay with not seeing grandma. 2. The police showed up. They were doing a wellness check because apparently no one has heard from me in a while. Then one of them had the brightest question and asked me why haven't I called my mother recently. She's worried about me and I haven't called my mother recently because, you know, she told everybody and their mama that my husband pushed me down the stairs. Then a few days after they showed up again. But this time with the activation, 
that my husband is abusing us. To be honest, I snapped. Nothing but angry tears and angry swearing came out of me. I was just so tired, I just wanted to be left alone with my family. 3. I decided to make an internet post telling people that I am tired of them. Family, friends, flying monkeys, harassing my family, attacking my husband and believing my mother's stupid lies. I get it, they are worried about me and I'm fine with that. But I don't appreciate that they believe my mother and refuse to even listen to me. I just wanted them to stop. They did not stop. It got worse. However, an hour after I made that post, my grandfather came to talk to me. He told me that he knows his daughter is crazy and he would do anything in his power to make this better. I don't know exactly what my grandfather did, but the mob has stopped. Y'all don't know how relieved I am. They are still trying to contact me just to talk and have a meeting with me, but now I can cut on my phone without it blowing up with messages. Now I have been stuck in this house since I broke my leg. I've been getting tired of being here so I asked my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. They have been taking care of me when my husband goes to work to take me out. They were hesitant at first but eventually they popped me and my daughter into the van and we surprised my husband at work with food. The incident with my husband's car made us realize that our house wasn't safe so we invested in security. As I was eating tacos with my family, I got a notification for my security and what do you know? It was my mom. I have been ignoring her calls and text messages and that's a new deadly sin apparently. My mom started banging on the door with my little sister screaming that she knows I'm in there and that monster, my husband, is trying to take me and her grandbaby away. We were watching my mom through a tantrum at the front door for a good solid minute because it was funny. But when my sister was ready to throw a rock through our window to get inside our house, that's when we decided to address them. We told them to get off our property, that I don't want to see my sister and especially not my mom, and that's me talking, not my husband. My mom said, I'm sorry baby, please open the door. I told her no, not after everything she did. She lied to everybody and told them that my husband pushed me down the stairs and my husband assaulted her unprompted. My mother screamed he did assault her and he even had the audacity to try to hit her. I said that's your fault. Do not blame my husband. What you said was disgusting. If I was him, I would have witch slapped you. My mom told me that I couldn't talk to her like that, that she's my mother and her DNA runs through my veins. I told her that my dad's DNA also runs through my veins as well and his DNA in me wants to beat your face in with a sock full of pennies. That caused my mom to go into a frenzy. So we called the cops and told them that there were two people at our house that we already told them to leave but they refused to. When police got there, they took my sister and my mom to talk with them for a little bit. And then one cop came up to the house to try to talk to us. We talked to them through the security camera and explained that we don't know those people. You know, like a liar. No matter how much they claim to be my mother and sister, we don't know them. They are strangers. Eventually, they left under the police threat that they would be arrested and we waited for a while to go back home. Just in case my family was secretly waiting for me in the shadows of something. My mom did try to go on another social media rant saying that oh my husband is keeping me captive and stuff. But luckily my grandfather shot that down. Update. Yesterday. I was asleep when it happened but my husband, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law and the security camera explained it to me. My in-laws were on the porch when my mom pulls up. She just wanted to see me for sure I was alive. My brothers-in-law and sister-in-law didn't let her into the house and threatened to call the cops. Mom accused them of helping my husband abuse my daughter and I. My husband came out and he started arguing with my mom as well. She kept calling him the usual abuser, Nazi and so on. Hey, that one was new. While everyone was distracted, one of my brother-in-law went inside of the house, went through the back door, went around the house, grabbed the garden hose, dragged that to the front and then proceeded to spray my mother down with a garden hose. My mom tries to get away but she keeps flipping on the grass. Then my brother-in-law passed the hose to my husband and then he kept spraying her. My husband chased my mom with the hose right to her car and he didn't stop spraying. I'm pretty sure he got water in her car. 
He had the biggest smile during and after the hosing. I bet it felt good. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.